So this arrived last night. Uh, the, what is it now? One, two, three, fourth replacements reissue box set. Um, this is the one I've been looking forward to the most uh, because it has the uh, Ed Stasium, I guess that's, a, I hope that's how you pronounce his name, uh, mix of the entire record, which is very different than, or not very different, it's different than the original uh, publicly released uh, version of Tim back in, when did it come out, 85, which when it comes to Tim, I've always thought that it includes, it's probably the best collection of songs, but the production and mixing, I just wasn't all that crazy about. Uh, and I listened to this, re the, the alternate mix last night, three times in a row. <laughs> Basically sat in this room and just played it on, I played it on CD, so I didn't want it to get up, so I'm getting older and lazier. Um, but I was, I was floored. It's, it's a little bumpy. Um, it's, and it's raw, but here comes a regular. Oh my God. Uh, what else caught me? Swingin' Party, uh, Hold My Life, Bastards of Young, Little Mascara. This is, I think if, if the, the, the Ed Stasium version of this is what was what had been released, it would have been the best replacements record. And maybe a, 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 a sort of cleaned up version of the Ed Stasium mix. I have to keep looking at his name. Uh, could have potentially been like an all time great. Definitely one of the best records of the 80s, uh, but one of the greatest the punk pop rock records. Just every song on this record is incredible. And I think most people point to Let It Be as their, their best record, which I believe preceded this. This is their first major label uh, release. Um, and, but I think in terms of songs, Tim is, is the best, um, which leads me, it had me thinking about, uh, my 10 and per usual, I have 11, uh, favorite album covers. I love album artwork. I spent, while I was listening to this three times last night, I made it almost all the way through, uh, this, I think it's written by Bob Mayer. M-E-H-R, uh, it's just tremendous. And some of the photos in here, just great, great photos of the band. Um, so album artwork, including covers, has o always been important to me. I think it's, it creates, I don't know, I'm not gonna try to describe it, you all know. Uh, but it's one of the, uh, you know, it, c it can, really, really add, or I guess subtract maybe, to the sound of a record. Um, but I did what I usually do, didn't spend a lot of time, and just kind of went through uh, my 10, so, or sorry, 11. So here they are. And of course, this is why I was <laughs> thinking of doing this. This is probably my favorite uh, album cover of all time. Uh, Let It Be, The Replacements, 1984. This is an original. Yeah, I'm almost positive it's 1984. Twin Tone. I recently bought a Twin Tone mug and a t-shirt. Thinking about Peter Jesperson, who I've met. Uh, if we are Instagram friends, um, and I'll include my Instagram at the bottom. Uh, I posted a photo of when I met Peter Jesperson, who used to manage The Replacements. Uh, I met him in 2013 uh, in Los Angeles, had a meeting with him, and just a wonderful, sweet, uh, he was like us, the way he talked about music. Um, just a really, really, and I've kept like loosely in touch with him ever since, just such a sweet guy. But this is probably my favorite album cover of all time. And there's a photo of Lane, my brother, sitting on the curb outside of this house, sort of, I think he's like looking at his phone. It's perfect. Uh, yeah. What an album cover. Uh, these are not in order, by the way. But next, Born to Run. 
I mean, I saw this album cover just nonstop as a kid. Uh, it was everywhere when I would go to my father's house. Uh, the, you know, Bruce leaning on Clarence, it just, this is Born to Run. And just the font, I love the font, everything about it, black and white, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, cover. Next, uh, on the New Jersey front, uh, The Meadowlands by The Wrens. And some of these are just because they remind me of parts of my life. This record, which came out, I believe, in 2003, and I think is a perfect record. Uh, if you were to ask me the best record since 2000s, it would be Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, this, and a handful of others. Josh Ritter, Historical Conquest of Josh Ritter. Um, but this, you know, this album was, or is, sort of about entering adulthood, something that I've been very slow to do <laughs> or have done late, you know, I'm still single, I've got a dog, I'm sharing too much personal stuff. But um, when this came out in 2003, I, it was at a very pivotal or, or transitional period in my life. A year later, I moved from New York to the Bay Area. I've been in the Bay Area ever since uh, and this it's 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 about that maturing maturation <laughs> period period of maturation is that right uh and this image just reminds me of new jersey i took a photo just like this not thinking that i was copying the meadowlands with like the same sort of filter or colors uh at a at a barn right near where my sister lives uh, in Bergen County, New Jersey. It took that about 20 years ago, maybe. And it just, every time I see this cover, it just reminds me of where I grew up, which was in New Jersey, in Bergen County. These are all sort of tied together. Uh, the phenomenal 10.0 Marah record, Let's Cut the Crap and Hook Up Later On Tonight. What an album title. One of the best debut records ever. If you don't know this record, Put it on today. Marah, M-A-R-A-H, an all-time record. And I love this primarily, some of these are just selfish, right? It's When I was considering sort of what to do with my career after college, <clears throat> I became friends with the guys in Marah, Serge and Dave, uh, and I think the earlier got Danny Metz. Um, so I think that was his name, I can't remember the drummer. Uh, I think Danny was the bass player. Um, and one day I got home from work, this is in 98 or 99, and we didn't have cell phones yet. It was on my home. I was living at home in New Jersey before I moved into Brooklyn. So this must have been 97 or 98. Uh, and there was a voicemail message from Serge in the band inviting me to their uh, holiday party. I don't know how we exchanged numbers, uh, Again, it wasn't cell phones, it was landline. I had my own landline at my mom's house. I remember that was like a big deal. We got a landline for Elaine and me, I think. Uh, but when I went to the holiday party, I saw this. Uh, I think it was like above a studio or above a, 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 car, a car, car repair shop or something. And I remember I walked in and I saw this and I was like, oh my God, that's from the album cover. Uh, and it was just such a wonderful night. We stayed up late, late. I remember Somebody was driving us around Philly. I was talking to Dave. I was talking about maybe renting a room in Dave's apartment or something. It was, <laughs> I don't know. These were some serious parties in Philly at the time. And I miss those guys. It was a fun, fun period. Uh, this one just reminds me of Minneapolis and visiting my brother uh, when he was at the University of Minnesota. Uh, and just, this was such a big record for us. Right after we discovered Uncle Tupelo, uh, I think I sent Lane Anodyne, or I told him to buy Anodyne, and then he sent me, or told me to buy, the Jayhawks Hollywood Town Hall, and that's where it all took off. Um, I just love, love, love this cover. Uh, I've always wanted to find that church. Um, I think it's a, yeah, it looks like a church. Uh, and take a shot out front. I don't, 
vaguely remember somebody saying it's not in Minnesota, but an all-time and just an incredible record. And this is uh, very timely given that Neil Young has played the Roxy the last two nights. I remember Jay Bennett, and I've, Jay Bennett from Wilco, and I've shared that my dog is named after Jay Bennett 7,000 times. Um, I think in one interview he said this was his favorite record of all time, and he sort of tried to describe why, and he said it's like, it's literally like what you hear rock and roll, like drugs, sex, this album almost like you can smell cigarette smoke or <laughs> And that's what Tonight's the Night sounds like to me, and it sounds like this cover. Um, this is just such an incredible record and such a, such just a mess, right? Like, but in such a good way. Uh, I'm gonna play this tonight. I hope they do a UHQ, is that what they call them? UHQR? I have a couple, but on this record, what a masterpiece. And that shot of Neil Young, just a great, great cover on an incredible album. This one will come as no surprise. Uh, the cover to the Silver Jews album, American Water. Uh, I bought an original painting of this. It's probably the most I've ever spent on anything outside of a house or a car. Uh, it wasn't super expensive. Uh, I mean, it's all relative, but um, it was, I think when I got my latest job, I said, uh, buy a gift for myself and I bought the original, uh, one original of these. It, the, the artist has done a bunch in the past few years. Um, uh, he's done posters, uh, larger ones that were even m more expensive, but it's on my living room wall and I absolutely love it. Uh, I look at it every day. This cover, just such a beautiful, beautiful cover on another phenomenal record. Uh, Towns Van Zandt. No, no, people don't really talk about this record that much. Um, I, I, this, from a music, for the sake of the song, Columbine, Waiting Around to Die, Don't Take It Too Bad, Colorado Girl, I'll Be Here in the Morning, Fare Thee Well, Miss Carousel, Quicksilver, Daydreams of Maria, and None But the Rain. That's a 10.0. <laughs> and this shot, I always think of Steve Earle's line, uh, I would walk in, or I would stand on Bob Dylan's kitchen table in my cowboy boots and declare that Towns Van Zandt is the greatest songwriter of all time. Whenever I think of that, I see that line a lot, and I always think it's this kitchen. But this is Towns's kitchen, not Dylan's. Uh, just, uh, I just love this album and love this cover and love Towns, everything Towns Van Zandt. So we got three more. Been listening to Lucinda Williams constantly. When this record came out, I found this photo. It's in a, a photo book called Juke Joint, uh, which I absolutely love. I still have it. Um, this is another 10.0 record. Uh, I listened to it the other night and I was like, are there any slips? And the only one, Joy, that's, is it Joy? Second to last song, right before Jackson. Uh, it's the only one that's, I think, not perfect. So maybe it's a 9.8. Um, but what a remarkable record, and uh, just love this cover photo. Uh, two more. Big Star. I mean, what a perfect album cover for everything that did or didn't happen with Big Star. Um, just a tremendous band. Maybe my... I don't know. Some days I'm like, this is my favorite band of all time and should have been the Beatles of the United States. Uh, and this is their opener, a big star. It's called Number One Record <laughs> for a band that should have made a number one record, but basically fell by the wayside during this period and is now, you know, obviously has been massively influential to so many of the bands I love. But just to come out of the gates with a record called Number One Record just fits Alex Chilton perfectly. Uh, and of course, uh, there's only one one remaining member. Um, Jody Stevens is the only one who's still still with us. Uh, and I met Jody, I think I shook his hand briefly, uh, at the Big Star Third show in New York City maybe 10 years ago. 
really sweet guy. And I know people who know Jody and say he's just a wonderful guy. Uh, but yeah, uh, Alex Chilton, Chris Bell, and Andy Hummel have all uh, passed away, uh, unfortunately. And then the final one, and this... Being there, I just love this cover. But it's also because being there opened up my ears to, I remember Peru, is it, not a Perubu, he's got the line uh, in Misunderstood. Um, you know, I was listening to tons of just Americana and alt country at this time. And then Wilco with Jay Bennett, Jay Bennett and Jeff Tweedy, uh, Ken Coomer, John Sturrett, and I think Max Johnson, put out this double record that was just, it's a masterpiece and it was just all over the place. Uh, and it led me down so many roads, like Modern Lovers and um, just really, this is the original, which I think I've shared, I got uh, at a record store in Hoboken a few days before it was released. Uh, took the train home to New Jersey and listened to it about a hundred times in the next month or however long I had it before it was officially released. And then I went out and bought the CD because I don't think they sold it. I don't think, I don't think it was available on vinyl. This may have just been for uh, like radio stations and I, I don't remember. I'm not telling the story right. Just love this. Take the guitar player for a ride. The guitar's neck. I'm sure I missed a ton. Uh, maybe I'll do a second one. But that was fun. Um, thank you to all the, again, the new folks who keep coming on board. And again, if you want to be my Instagram friend, I think I'm public. I'll, if not, I'll make it public. And I uh, hope you all have a nice weekend. And what else? That's all I got. Take care.